Welcome to 90s Noise. I'm April, born 1991. And I'm Ashley, born in 1988. 90s Recess. <laughs> 90s reset. Oh man. Is that what we're going with? 90s 90s activities, 90s kid 90s outdoors. 90s outdoor life experiences. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we could probably have multiple episodes based just on like recess act outdoor activities, like other childhood activities. Yeah. That we we did growing up. So what yeah. was a big one for you? So thinking about kind of my childhood and growing up in the 90s, it's almost kind of split for me because half of the 90s I lived in like a suburban neighborhood and then the other half I lived more rural. So didn't really have a lot of neighbors and friends around. So my experiences I feel like are very different in each half of the 90s as far as what I kind of enjoyed in my neighborhood versus what I enjoyed when I was living in St. Cloud. So I, I'll, I'll talk, I mean, we can start talking about like the early 90s things, I guess, first and kind of see if we did a lot of the same stuff because, yeah. but I think one of my biggest things that I did probably, I don't know how old I was, it was like maybe 93 to 95, maybe that time frame. I did like the the daisies and the brownies program oh yes <laughs> yes those were the good the good Did you go times. were you a part of those at all yeah so okay i i definitely did we didn't really have a daisy troop in mm -hmm. our area so i kind of joined brownies a year early just because of that fact, and my mom was helping the troop leader and everything, mm -hmm. so same. Yeah. she's like, just bring her. She's barely not old enough, so we'll just <laughs> so we'll squeeze her in. <laughs> yeah, we'll squeeze her in. So that was that. Brownies was definitely a big part. I mm -hmm. I did brownies up until like the second year of juniors. I think. Okay. It was. Oh wow. Okay. At that time, it was starting to. Other things were starting to be a little bit exactly. more exactly, yeah, <laughs> important to me. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, that's kind of how my experience was with it because we did that when we lived in the neighborhood. Like my mom was involved with the with the troops, and my sister did Girl Scouts. So I kind of, you know, being younger than her, kind of followed and and did some of the same things. But once we moved, that all stopped. Like we didn't do that anymore. I don't know why, but it's kind of was okay. like, eh, okay. No more of that. Well, we're going to move on and do other activities now. But I do remember a lot of those troop meetings and we had a lot of little parties and gatherings at our house. And of course, selling the, the Girl Scout cookies was always a big thing. Like that was, I think, probably the biggest reason why a lot of people wanted to join is like, sell the Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> I was an absolute beast at selling Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> <laughs> and I I solely base that on my aunt and my grandma, both down in Texas. They both had like, well, actually both of my grandmas had big freezers. Like those oh my huge God. <laughs> separate freezers. And so I think one year my aunt bought like almost 15 boxes of each. Oh, of each what? Kind. Jeez. And... At that year, I think I was like the top seller, not only in my troop, but mm -hmm. in our district. And wow. So our troop, like our troop loved it because we got oh, like, a like whatever special thing for it. Yeah, I was trying to think of what you got when you were the top cookie seller, but I don't remember, to be honest. I think in the Midwest, it was like a pizza party paid for okay. by Girl Scouts yeah, or something I, like that. It probably was the same in our area too, just a yeah. party. Now, did you know, I don't know if any of our listeners who buy Girl Scout cookies, sold <laughs> Girl Scout cookies, did you know that it actually, the names of some of the Girl Scout cookies differ based on where you live? Really? Yeah. Ooh. So the they were always called caramel delights or caramel yeah. delights, however you yeah, say it. Yeah, that's what we had. Mm -hmm. In this area now, they're called Samoas, I think. Oh, you're right. Actually, yeah, they are called that. Mm -hmm. And then like the shortbreads, like the Girl Scout shaped mm -hmm. emblem, when Ooh, they were just good. shortbreads. Yeah, that was 
purely what they were called and they were called something else because I was actually talking to a friend a couple days ago we were talking about Girl Scout cookies because it's about the time when they're selling any Girl Scouts <laughs> out there <laughs> let us know where we can find you <laughs> oh my gosh do they even like are they even pushing them out you know because we always sold them outside of grocery stores and stuff are they doing that still like are they allowed to sit out there and do that anymore with COVID and everything I know back in the panhandle last year they were Mm. Even when we were down, when we were down in Orlando, there's a there was an app that you could download that would tell you. Really? Oh my gosh! Of course. <laughs> of course. Stop. <laughs> An app I, now. Of, oh. co of course, I fucking downloaded that shit because I was like, "Fuck yes, I want those damn Girl Scout cookies." Jeez. I believe so. It's just a matter of when are they selling? Because mm. it also kind of varies. Like some areas are selling them now like mm -hmm. the orders and right. then i think it's like february when they would actually start being Just in store being, yeah they're expensive though now aren't they they're like five bucks a box or something i haven't bought them it, bought an any in forever so i have no idea but man those are the good old days though Oh my gosh, those are so addicting. I've oh. I was just I was just eating some of the knockoffs actually the other night the the cheapo <laughs> knockoffs. I actually my mom had gotten me some and I've been munching on those. But <laughs> even those are aren't too bad. Mm -mm. I because I'm addicted to thin thin mints. I think thin mints were always my favorite growing up, and I still are. But <laughs> and it's really hard to just like sit and only have like three or four. Oh, you yeah. just want serving a size. Mm -mm. I don't listen to that. No. I... <laughs> so what were some of the activities that you guys did? I was going to ask you that because I was trying to because I have my Oh, my God, I still have my Brownie Girl Scout book. And I was trying to look through it. But I don't remember anything. To be honest, I have no idea what we did. Oh, <laughs> my God. I remember going doing like the different we had like a little camp. There was like a outdoor camp place mm -hmm. that was for Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. So we would go do that and like horseback riding, mm -hmm. hiking, building fires, cooking hmm. things. Wow. There was also one of the biggest things that we always loved doing. I don't know if you guys ever did down in this area, but there was a midnight at the mall. What was that? So there was a local mall that would allow Girl Scouts. There would be from brownies up into like the seniors or whatever they were called, mm -hmm. the, the highest group, that the mall, once the mall closed at 6 p.m., at like 7 p.m., the Girl Scouts were allowed in. Oh, wow. And we were able to be in there until I think it was like 4 a.m., or something what? yeah stores were a, no not all stores were open but a mm -hmm. lot of stores were they had like movies playing oh cool and it was you pretty much stayed with your group right um, like you were in this section for like an hour you watched a little fashion show <laughs> you were this other section for an hour then you went to the movies eating food it was one of the things that i know personally for me i always looked forward to because it was just something different. Hell yeah, that's so fun. Like, but yeah. you were, what, five, six, and you were allowed to stay up that late? Yeah. <laughs> I, I love and it. It, <laughs> it. And it was funny because, like, the first couple of years when I was young, of course, you were, oh, yeah, we're going. We're, we've mm -hmm. got all this candy. Yeah, yeah. And then I remember my last year of doing that, me and, like, everybody that was my grade, we just all passed out during the movie i think it was oh. <laughs> it was either shrek or thumbelina mm. they they had to like do like the pure g-rated movie oh of course and yeah i think it was thumbelina because i was like i've seen this movie so many times growing up because i think it was like fourth grade or something so 1999 2000 okay. and i'm just like Ugh. and all of us were, were like i think they took a picture of us because we didn't wake up right when it ended all of us girls just like everybody's got <laughs> our head on somebody else's shoulder i and, love it yeah it was it was always a good time though because it was just 
different. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, because you, you're around all these girls and a lot of them maybe you grew up with, you went to school with, maybe they're kids you hang, hung out with around the neighborhood, or they just were, you know, random people that you ended up making friends with. But I know a lot of my friends were in the brownie troop and, you know, we got to to hang out and do more activities outside of school, which is always fun, you know, when you're a young kid like that and getting to yeah. to kind of do these things. I know we went to I'm thinking now because I remember seeing a couple of photos that I had. We went to one of the theme parks as like a as a troop. I don't remember which one. It was probably a Disney one. But we went to one of the parks and then I know we did some other tour. If I don't know if it was at some animal rescue or something, but I remember we were kind of around all these different animals. So I don't know if it was like a farm or something that we went to. So I know we did get to go out and do some really cool activities, which is always, you know, exciting and different and you get to kind of experience new things but i wish i i wish i knew more of what we did because that was definitely a big part of my childhood growing up for a couple years oh yeah definitely for me too i i think part of the reason i remember it so well my mom was troop leader right it makes a huge difference a while Mm -hmm. you kind of got like better you got better dibs on stuff yeah that's the same for us we got to we got to host most of the parties and we got to really plan a lot of the stuff so yeah you you kind of have an in on that yeah or get to know when something's coming in like <laughs> yes <okay>. like <laughs> the all the here, cookies yes the cookies are at my house <laughs> yep <laughs> oh was... my gosh yes I, I would always go with my mom to pick them up because, I mean, we had a troop of probably 25 girls oh, wow. or something. It was a decent size. That's a big size, yeah. A, it was first grade through fourth grade. And we just okay. most of the time did it at the elementary school, the gym there. Because mm-hmm. literally, I could see my elementary school. Yeah, from that's what we did too. Porch. We had and, some meetings and stuff at the schools. Yeah. And so... We would just, my mom we had a big, one of those big Ford vans <laughs> that could hold seven people plus boxes or suitcases, mm. whatever was needed. Mm-hmm. So we would always, it would always be me and her would go grab the cookies and just fill the boxes in the van. And it would just be the two of us because we would need the entire van for it. Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah, all the boxes being delivered. I think I remember that too. We had all the cookies for the troops being delivered at our place. So we then had to like, just, you know, you distribute them out and divvy them up and who gets what and who's going to go to which store and who's going to be with who. And yeah. (laughs) So we never actually did the store sales. Really? Yeah. Where'd you sell them at then? We literally would go door to door oh okay like we we would have the order forms interesting we'd go door to doors (laughs) in the neighborhoods what do they call those not telemarketing but like i forgot what they call those people that go door to door and sell things i don't know door to door salesman (laughs) maybe yep there you go you started you started an early career in sales didn't you (laughs) yeah but when you're when like people are literally asking you throughout the year hey when do girl scout cookies start when do you start selling girl oh my gosh yeah it's like look i don't know i don't care just (laughs) i did feel bad for like all of the teachers because they had to it was either the very first person that got to them. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Or they weren't buying from anybody. They were just going to buy from a family member. Yeah, you, you would get, ask everyone. Yeah, you get 10 Hi, girls person. coming up to you. And what was I think it was like $4 a box at that time. Yeah, I don't but, know how much they were back then. Yeah, I mean, that's like, you'd have to buy just one box from each person. And that yeah. adds up so quickly. Yeah, yeah. So it was one of those things where it was just... It was kind of known that it was either you either got to them first or they just flat out were telling you, I'm buying from my niece or my next door neighbor already got me kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have you ever, because it's kind of, I don't know if it's kind of like brownies and stuff, but have you ever heard of or did Awanas? Never heard of that. Okay. What is it? Yeah. I remember we were a part of that because I, we had like a childhood friend who their kids were involved in it. So we, I don't know if we were officially like members all the time or if we just joined them every so often and sort of 
participated in some of the stuff. But I recall like it was probably like a big gem and they had a bunch of different games and activities. And so the kids would kind of compete against each other and it was different age groups and levels. I think it was more of like a church thing. If I'm, I'm not really sure what Awana's was in general, like what it, what the purpose of it was. I was trying to look it up now, but I think it has something to do with the church. To be honest, okay. I think that's kind of where it originated from, something involving whatever church you went to. And maybe they had some big groups, a couple of different churches that came together and did that. But I do remember that because we had like these little vests and you got like these little medals and pens and stuff for whatever you want. And it was just kind of this fun outing that you can go to and just compete and do different things. <laughs> that sounds like fun. That sounds like yeah. fun. We had a thing. No, medals weren't ever like really given out or anything, but... We would have a, what was it, relay days or something like that, where it was kind of just the whole schools would get together and. Oh, okay. Like a field like, day almost? Yes, field I day. I loved field day. Oh yes. my God. We could have a whole episode on field day because that shit was the bomb. I loved that, it. Do you guys have multiple ones during the year? Because we oh, only yeah. ever had one. I think we had a couple throughout the year, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe two yeah. at, at most. Because we only, it was only ever one day a year that was field yeah. day. But being up in Kansas, like you kind of, the weather. You're limited with the weather. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so we, it was fun because you got to like mingle with the entire school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So another thing that I know I did as a kid, I, I think it was only like very temporarily, like a, just a brief little stint in my life because I know that you did as well, but I was on the the soccer league or the team or soccer whatever little kids junior soccer thing whatever you call it i know i did that very briefly so was soccer the only one that you did pretty sure that's the only thing that i was ever involved in like sports wise i growing up with two older brothers they were both pretty athletic mm -hmm. especially my middle brother and so i always tried to keep up with them i did soccer this is with the small town. We had like a little basketball league for people okay. for kindergartners through sixth Aww. grade. Hmm. Because it wasn't until seventh grade that you actually played school sports. Right. And I did basketball through all throughout hmm. kindergarten through sixth. Wow. I played softball until my fifth grade year. My fifth grade summer was my last summer. A soccer I didn't do as much. Oh really? Not as much. Yeah, because it was it was also it was a little harder. They did, we didn't have like an actual league in our area. We ha would have had to have gone to Lawrence or Topeka, mm. which was a good twenty thirty minute drive. Mm -hmm. And so we did that to start with when I was young. But then when I started to get into softball and basketball, right. my parents were like, "Okay, you can't do everything." <laughs> yeah, you gotta pick. Like, yeah, your brothers are starting to get to the age where they're doing sports mm -hmm. and they're doing school activities that are affecting that too. We need a break, right? Which I was fine with because at that time I was like, ah, "I don't like to just run, 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 run." So soccer got the boot. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I love watching soccer. I yeah, do. I do too. Yeah, I think that's one of the more enjoyable sports that I can sit and watch a bit more of. But yeah, I'm not really sure kind of how my experience with soccer went. And I'm pretty sure that I signed up for it because my sister had signed up for it. But I don't know if it maybe it was just like a summer thing, like a summer activity that my parents did to kind of keep me active during the summer. But I know it was, it was very short lived. And I'm not really sure why I know that it could have had something to do with it. I didn't have very good eyesight as a kid. So I didn't have glasses yet when I was doing it. And maybe I didn't like it because of that respect. And I, and so it just didn't work out. But my sister was involved in a lot of sports. She was more like your family growing up. She did a lot of the different like softball and the, the basketball. She did a lot of those things. I didn't though. For some reason I went with soccer. And then shortly after that, I went into horses and we kind of, went in that direction. I didn't get involved in any other sports. I did do ballet though. So that we can consider that a sport. I did do a lot of ballet classes. I was obsessed with that. That is definitely a sport. It is. <laughs> Anyone who says that it's not, go fuck yourself. Go exactly. Go try and do some <laughs> some of those moves cuz that shit's hard. 
I mean, hell, like NFL players go and take ballet lessons. That's to true. Help with their footwork. Mm -hmm. NFL players. Yeah. I wanted to do ballet. I really? I really did. But I did some, gym I did gymnastics when I was young, like little. Mm -hmm. And I just was so poorly coordinated and flexible. I wasn't flexible at all. Yeah. Which not me. is funny. Like as much of the sports that I did do. Right. I guess those just really weren't ones that truly needed flexibility. Because mm -hmm. I True. at a, at a young age, I was tall. Yes. Mm -hmm. Were, oh, were yeah. you? Oh, yeah. I was always the tallest in any group that I was in. Okay. Because I, cause I know like some people, even girls, they have like growth spurts later on. Yeah. But for me, like, I don't think I've grown since probably fifth or sixth grade. Yeah. I think when I, by the time I entered high school, I was at my max height too and i'm like some mm -hmm. people are more torso some mm -hmm. people i'm i'm legs <laughs> and so i couldn't do a lot of like the gymnastics stuff the ballet stuff my mom flat out was like april uh, you, no you, yeah <laughs> pretty much. Oh, at least she was honest with you and you you know you kind of tried it but it was like no it's not your thing yeah i like, honestly wish i had done gymnastics that's one thing i wish i would have been able to kind of do a little bit because I wish I was more flexible and able to do those moves but I was always that was always like my favorite sport to watch at the Olympics oh yeah when the Olympics mm -hmm. would come on I'd always have to watch gymnastics. oh my gosh so you did ballet mm -hmm. and soccer now what non sports organized things? yeah activities did you do and this is and we're focusing a little bit more on outside of school we're we'll right we'll get into like the actual recesses mm -hmm. and everything probably in a later episode yeah just different things that we did with our friends after school you know what kind of kept us occupied when we weren't in school and it wasn't related to like tv shows and movies and video games those things all all have their own sort of category and and that's not what we're gonna discuss here because we obviously did a lot of that because remember kids <laughs> this was before screens what you were attached mm -hmm. to screens exactly before that a lot of times households only had one tv so you you know yes. you couldn't always get access to it and you kind of had to share your time but let's get ready to rumble <laughs> <laughs> i feel like some of the things that i enjoy doing outside of school i was gonna say skating because but that's kind of an that's kind of indoor-y because we you know the skating rinks are indoor but did, uh, but did you do outside i don't think we ever went skating outside no i don't really? think we ever uh -uh, i don't think we ever had our own skates and went skating to be honest so that was a big thing for us actually really we would get rollerblades Mm. And we would do some. We would do some rollerblade. We had like a decent sized driveway and like mm -hmm. little parking slabs. My dad had filled it with concrete, so we would just skate around. Nice on that. Rollerblades were definitely they were big on the back Christmas then. List and mm -hmm. everything and stuff. Yeah, those were booming for sure. Yeah, I think we were more into riding our bikes around the neighborhood. To be honest, because we had a really great neighborhood, and our neighborhood was basically attached to our elementary school was so we were able to just ride our bikes down you know through the neighborhood into school and so I think just being able to kind of have that access and meeting up with our friends and stuff we would just hop on our bikes and sort of go to whoever's house we wanted to for that day and and that's kind of more of what we did but I don't ride bikes anymore and, I, and that's so sad because yeah. I loved riding bikes you know what I mean like I wish I had the that same sort of access to be able to just get on a bike and kind of ride around because right now I don't trust the roads oh and I don't want to be out there. So I don't go, but yeah. that was, those were so fun. I loved being able to do that. I did too. Bike riding was huge for us. That's actually how I broke my first bone. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> was riding my bike, but we would either do where we'd go meet friends um, mm -hmm. or just as a family. My brothers would be on their bikes. I would be on mine and my parents would walk with us. Okay. We'd go around our town. Now, hmm. granted, our town, it's very quaint right. and small. Mm -hmm. You could, riding bikes and walking, you could get around it from our house 
all the way around town back to our house the other from the other way in about half an hour time hmm. okay now Not bad. that would depend on how many stops or how right. like slow we were going mm -hmm. but it was it's a very it, it, you blink and you miss it when you're trying to screw on it and so we would do that unfortunately i didn't have a lot of friends that like lived in town most of them mm. were more rural okay and so i would always tag along with my brothers which they always hated it but <laughs> i'm sure they didn't have much of a choice so we'd play football like okay touch football mm -hmm. then Again, the elementary school was not even a two-minute walk. Mm. We literally could see it from our front porch, so we'd go up nice. there and play on the swing set, the mm. bars, all of that. And I loved tree climbing. Did you ever really? Do, did you ever climb trees? I don't really think I did a lot of that growing up. I think maybe once I moved out to the farm, we obviously had a ton of trees out there. I probably did a little bit of it, but I don't think I that was an activity I really enjoyed at all. Really? Mm -mm. It was yeah. always, how high can you get? There was a couple of, like, the shows that I'd watch would have, like, tree houses in them. Or tree mm -hmm. Oh, lighting. yeah. I and always so I wanted always... one of those. I would have loved to have one of those, to be honest. We had, like, a little clubhouse. It wasn't really a tree house. Okay. It was a freestanding like that, like I said, clubhouse. Mm -hmm. Oh man, those are some good times. We uh, have yeah somebody up there, and we would play. Oh gosh, what was it? It would be like they'd have a ball or something, and they'd yell out a number, mm -hmm. and if you caught it, you got that many points. Okay. And then once you got to a certain number, then you took the other person's place of throwing it. Hmm. But you had to be careful because sometimes they could call out negative points. Oh, you don't want to catch that. Exactly. And it was just a lot of, that's such a very boy game to play. But again, I grew up with older brothers. Right. So my games and everything mm -hmm. were very boy focused. They were more physical almost, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, more yeah, involved. Like, yeah. We'd watch wrestling. Now, we wouldn't do that outside necessarily because that could be <laughs> a little bit more dangerous. But yeah, like the different outside sports, like we were saying baseball, soccer. Mm -hmm. Did you ever have one of those little cars that you sat in and, and kind of drove around in outside at all? I wanted those, but I was always too big for those. Oh, really? Yeah. Aww. Plus, they were also expensive. Yeah, so, yeah, some of those were. It was one where I wanted, I, th I did want those. Mm -hmm. There was like one specific one that I really had <laughs> wanted, but it was just way too much. Like, if they, my parents had gotten that for me, that would have been the only gift only they could thing. have gotten me. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to, they wanted more quantity in that sense, because they also didn't feel like that quality they they thought i would get better use of other things combined right mm -hmm. as opposed to that one item that could right. only be used for a certain amount of time exactly you kind of grow out of them pretty quickly for sure yeah. yeah i know we had them growing up but i only really remember kind of riding around in it when i was very young like two three at the max and then i don't think we ever really used them anymore uh -huh. but I know that the cars they have out now are like super, super fancy. They're like mini models of actual cars, you know, like BMWs and Lexus and like just way too ridiculous and fancy for these little kids. It's absurd. And I'm sure they probably cost almost as much as a real one. So you're like, probably. what the hell? <laughs> That's the thing. Like we would have... We had the quintessential red wagon. Oh, yes, and... we had that too. Oh, my God. <laughs> Pull them around in that. <laughs> yes, there is that. Or, um, so this is for, we would also use shovels. This is this is the Shovels. Midwest, um, like the cold area type of people will do. We're literally, you're you're small enough as a kid where you just it's a big snow shovel. Oh, God. and you sit on it, and then somebody pulls you oh, using my gosh. the handle. 
so we would do that like obviously when it was snowing, when it was snowing. and everything because mm-hmm. yeah there was one video because it's on vhs i'm like maybe two years old right mm-hmm. and it snowed and back in kansas like in the early 90s mid early to mid 90s it snowed a lot actually mm-hmm. during the winter later on it wasn't doing too much but my dad and middle brother are making an igloo my mom's inside with a video camera like the big chunky video yeah <laughs> my oldest brother is pulling me around in the the little red wagon Aww. and ashley i'm sitting there and i have so many layers on that like my arms are like just sticking out because like i can't put them down <laughs> and at one point he goes over like a little bump or something and i just fall over and ashley oh. Oh. i fall over in the same state like i'm still like just <laughs> it's one of the oh fucking funniest little videos i i have to see if i can't get that somehow that is hilarious that little red wagon lasted a, whole, a hell of a long time like you wouldn't think those things would last yeah, we had ours up until just recently. We, I think actually my dad may even still have it, to be honest. He may have moved and moved with it, but that, yeah, that thing lasts forever. Like that, that shit was no joke. Did you ever find like a hill or anything or like a little road that wasn't like we did it in our driveway because our mm. driveway had like a little steep part of it. Mm. So we literally get pull oh. it, the, that little red wagon up to the top of the driveway oh that would be so fun it in, and then just ride it down dang no you forget we live in florida there we lived in florida there is no hills anywhere because <laughs> i was gonna ask like you definitely would have had different outdoor experiences especially during the winter time because you probably mm-hmm. did a lot of different stuff when it was snowing out whereas yes. in florida there's not really any ch- season changes so we didn't really get to do any of that stuff. The only time I got to do that was when I would go up and visit my cousins and families up north. And we would be able to to take some of the sleds out and go sledding or tubing or whatever. We would Gosh. be able to do that. But I'm sure you had that more often than I would have. We'd, we'd get our little sleds and do in our yard. Which had a, there was a little different. There was a couple different areas that were had some of a, a little bit of a hill. Mm-hmm. Of course, when you're little, that was big. But once <laughs> I got to like six, seven, those weren't big enough. It was just kind of like a baby hill. Oh like, yeah, you wanted something baby. more. <laughs> so we would go out to the lake, one of the lakes. There was a lot of like ATV trails mm. that we would do. Oh, cool that shit was fun like you we would just slide down the atv trails because it was already most of the time atvs had already been going through and everything Mm -hmm. so the snow was already packed and you could get some fucking speed on that god shit (laughs) and there's nothing scarier than being like seven or eight years old you're on a sled by yourself Mm -mm. and you just keep gaining speed and all you see in front of you is like trees oh and you're just like and you hear your dad from the top (laughs) and so you you roll oh. off. Oh god. Because that's that was the only really one of the you only can't ways stop like it. yeah. Cuz you're you, the sleds made for like cuz we always would get the adults, the adult mm. rounded sleds. And so it's not like I had like the ability to put my feet down or anything like right. that in front of me. And so it literally was the only option was just bailing off. Oh man! Oof. If only my mom was rush. <laughs> absolutely. Uh. Of course, of course, that would always be uh, me, my dad, and my brothers. <laughs> oh, you're it right. was one of those. <laughs> it was one of those things where <laughs> what mama don't know don't hurt her. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. I don't even know if I would have done that growing up. I was not a big risk taker. I didn't really like doing a lot of risky things as a kid so i probably would have been too scared to to really do much of that myself i had to i to keep up with my brothers i had to (laughs) i did i was always they oh let's do this uh we'd go out skiing a lot Mm. almost every year 
and me and my middle brother especially we were always competing mm-hmm. and so legitimately we'd we'd go skiing and all right who could get down the slope fastest <laughs> or we one time went and did a double black and literally we were at the very top of the mountain we started at the very top of the mountain and it was one of those things where i think my brother had had said let's do a double black i was like let's go to the top of the mountain and my dad's like what have i done uh, right <laughs> he's like okay guys we're going but you're not going to tell your mom about this until after we get down obviously because we didn't have cell phones or anything right yeah guess where we're going mom <laughs> Yeah. I just remember like my goal was like, I'm not going to be the one to make us stop. Because my dad's like, we may need to stop. Like, if you need to stop, just Mm. tell me. I'm like, I don't need to stop. Right. I I wasn't the one that made us stop. My brother asked for us to stop twice on the way down. So, booyah. (laughs) (laughs) That's hilarious. So, yes, I I was very competitive and took a lot more risks as a child Mm -hmm. than I feel like I do now. Like, I don't know, maybe it's, it's because of all those risks now, like anxiety level. I'm just like, Mm. okay, this can happen. This can happen. This can happen. This can happen. Whereas a child, you're, you're invincible. Don't. Yeah, exactly. You don't think of those really as often. Yeah. I think one of the bigger things that we did growing up in Florida was we obviously had a swimming pool. So we did a lot of pool parties and we did swimming lessons and you know we we kind of spent a lot of our afternoons in the pool i think that that's something that we got to do more of than what you would have gotten to do in the midwest for sure our pool time was from memorial day to labor day (laughs) legitimately yeah yeah we did get a pool in our backyard later on Mm -hmm. it was like fifth sixth grade or something like that which sucked because my birthday being in april i could never do a pool party because it was Mm. before we'd open the pool right get it ready had to get it to where it wasn't green that's one thing down here in florida i doubt you really dealt much with was did yours ever turn like that green oh yeah yeah you had to keep up with yeah i mean with the humidity and all the different things that kind of are in the air pools are so hard to keep up with like they're so expensive and i don't even know how my parents did it for all those years but that's like a full-time job like you you can't let it go for more than a day or two and then it it's gonna get gross again so i think but as kids we utilize the pool so often that it was able to sort of keep itself you know running and clean but once we got a little bit older and we kind of stopped using the pool as much it was mm-hmm. sort of like eh, we don't really care about it anymore then it was way more upkeep for them and the pool went green a lot and like yeah. it just wasn't as good did you ever do like slip and slides though the slip and slide i oh remember doing gosh. that a lot in the summertime yes we would get so grass burned did you ever get that grass stains not grass, or grass stains. burns i mean grass- grass birds <laughs> did you ever get those oh hell yeah okay yeah that was always like the biggest issue for me with slip and slides fucking love that shit it was like worse than like sliding for softball Ooh, those grass yeah. burns mm-hmm. that shit was no joke yeah that wasn't i don't know it just did you ever have trouble with those we would always get them and then they just never really worked very well like they'd work good for like the first day. Yeah, you almost had to have like a bucket nearby to kind of keep them wet and stuff because the hookups never really did a whole lot to it. And you always had to kind of add your own and and kind of make it so that it was more easier to slide down because the worst thing would be going down it and then getting stuck. Like that shit was the worst. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh. oh i fucking hated that because we had a we had a slide in our pool at our one house and you know it was came with kind of like a water feature where it would keep it you know well sometimes it didn't work it was the same thing but sometimes it didn't work so you had to kind of splash water on it so if you went down Mm -hmm. and you got stuck like going down the slide we're like okay we're not using the slide anymore (laughs) yeah we would we always had an above ground pool so we never really had that Mm. we would do the slip and sides a lot when i was younger Mm -hmm. and then 
as I got older, kind of as we just, again, it was the same thing because it was the same little hill in our oh, yard okay. that we would oh, use. Oh, nice. So you could kind of go down a little bit. Oh, that would have been fun. Yeah. But once you got to a certain age, that just... Right. It, yeah. And I mean, they're nothing. technically not made for once you get to a certain age point. And, and I remember reading something a, a while ago about how there were a lot of issues and accidents with slip and slides because like adults and stuff were trying to use them and getting hurt but they're like well it's not really made for adults so like it's not our fault <laughs> it's like for a kid okay. <laughs> i would like to contest that or at least state i guess if we need to do an adult slip and slide we need to take a page out of the girls next door book because they would do like the uh, i would always watch girls next door when it was girls out next and everything. door it's the it's the Hugh Hefner with the um Bridget, Holly, oh, and Kendra. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I remember that yeah. show. They so for the fourth of July they would always do a big slip and slide. Oh. And it was literally it looked like they just used like a massive tarp. Mm -hmm, and probably. they just had a good <laughs> hill in mm -hmm. at the mansion that they could go down That's and the way they to do just it. had had like 10 hoses going at the same like <laughs> on it and everything <laughs> so oh my god they really need to make an adult slip and slide uh, i'm yeah exactly i'm surprised they don't have one because it would probably get utilized a lot more at a lot of those summer parties now than the kids probably don't care for them anymore because kids are on their fucking phones mm -hmm. or their tablets and mm -hmm. shit. And it's us adults who are like, give me some like activities. Stimulation. To do. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm not going to lie. All of these like bounce houses. Oh my God. I was going to talk about bounce houses. I love are not being utilized by <laughs> these kids. Make them a little bit bigger and we'll oh. fucking use them. Oh my gosh. We had, I did bounce house parties myself, but. We went to this thing for over Christmas, this light show, and they uh -huh. had this massive bounce house thing. I, s I saw where you could go. Stuff. Yeah, any any age could go on it. Like it was, Shit. it was legit. I didn't go on it, but it was legit set up for any age group. And they don't have enough of those. But those are fun. They're starting to try to bring some of that back, like with yeah. like the bubble runs. They're doing. Oh, yeah. There was one that had like a big bounce house like slide and hmm. everything okay they, they had it back in the midwest um i don't remember what it was called but where it was literally just like a bounce house slide like those hmm. massive mm -hmm. ones the inflatable ones god i freaking i love those but they stunk so fucking bad yeah they did because eh, all the kids in there and the sweaty socks and like yeah Oof. they got a little after a while but i i do remember a lot of birthday parties involving those for sure. I don't know if maybe it was just not the cool thing back in the Midwest or something, or maybe it was just the parties that I went to. I didn't do a lot of birthday parties that had bounce houses. It was okay. more like the carnivals, the fairs mm. that would rent them. Maybe it was also just because it was kind of expensive <laughs> and to put like to find an area, like a lot of the people to be that able I to up with. Yeah, you have to have a good space to be able to put yeah. those two. Uh, plus a good space close enough to an outlet for it to actually air up and everything. And there's, yeah, no, bounce houses were fun. I, they were. I did enjoy those. So did you ever have a trampoline, though, as a kid? No, I hated that we didn't. But we didn't have, we didn't have a lot of flat area mm, so okay. our pool which was an above ground pool was pretty much in one of the only flat only. areas that we had my my parents thing was they didn't want like us to get a trampoline and it'd be like in the front yard where people driving by could just see easily mm, okay yeah they'd want it in the backyard but again right. the backyard had the pool for same reasoning mm -hmm. um, plus the flatness and then like our dogs were back there and then we had our clubhouse so there just wasn't enough room but i always loved going over to people's houses who had trampolines <laughs> i loved going over there yeah i think we well we got one when we moved to our farm so we had obviously tons of space to to be able to have one there and i think i i jumped on that thing so much growing up as a kid and then there were times when I would bring our dogs up onto the trampoline and they would just kind of hang out with me and, and we would kind of bounce around a little bit. But I just remember 
loving the shit out of that trampoline. Like that was such a cool thing to be able to have as a kid growing up. It was, it was a fun, just, you know, go out there and get, you get a little exercise, you know, you get a little bit of sunshine and just sort of bounce around. I think my parents were also a little worried with us kids. We were ones that we were accident prone. We always oh, were well. doing different. <laughs> we always were doing different things, but we were so accident prone. It's not even mm-hmm. funny. And so they, I think, were worried that if they had gotten us a trampoline, number one, the boys would be too rough with it, mm-hmm. and in turn, like if I was on it with the boys on it, then it would be like I'd get hurt, right. Or something along those lines. Or we had yeah. a lot of kids that would like walk through our yard to get to school. <laughs> and they were like, oh, we don't want somebody else's kid just to get hurt. Get hurt yeah. on it without that makes sense. us even being here. Mm-hmm. So they were very, which is why we had like gate around the pool and everything because we mm. didn't want that kind of a situation. Yeah. When I was older, we had kids coming over all the time can we use your pool it's like i'm not gonna stand out there watching you so no you can't right yeah that's a that's a thing that's a big liability for for having Mm. those things and i'm sure even though i don't really feel like it was something that was a big issue for a lot of parents you know because kids went over to other people's houses all the time and like i said Mm -hmm. we had pool parties and you did different things like that Nowadays, I feel like you would be a little bit more inclined to have those parents that are just ridiculous about it. And they're like, well, sign a consent form. (laughs) I kid you not. If I had a child right now that was like of an age to do something, Mm -hmm. I would if I had any of their friends over to do anything, their parents would sign a fucking consent form (laughs) every damn time because I would not because it would just be one of those things where. I stubbed my toe. I'm going to sue your ass. Right, they stubbed yeah. their toe. I'll be like, that's the thing. fucking kid. Yeah. Did you break any bones when you were growing up? Okay. They're going to break some. It's not mm-hmm. like I freaking took a hammer and hit their damn right. toe. It's not a, yeah. It wasn't intentional. <laughs> like, you know, they're going to get hurt. Like it just, it's part of growing up. And you know, that's just something you have to live with as with having kids. You just don't know what they're going to do and, and all that kind of shit. But yeah, I couldn't imagine having to go through that i i i feel like i would probably be the house where nobody would be allowed to come over to be honest like if you want to go somewhere you go somewhere but i don't want any kids here and having to deal with the parents and the you know just the did timmy get his sandwich and oh make sure that he's he's allergic to that and just oh no (laughs) i i can't even imagine that side note like why i'm not having kids right (laughs) but it's one of those things where it's like my kids would be out having scraped knees Mm -hmm. probably they'd probably at least once every three years have a cast because they'd break something (laughs) from playing (laughs) playing like i broke up i broke my fucking wrist when i was five from riding my bike the week before kindergarten started oh gosh i broke uh my thumb playing basketball actually side note that was actually my brother's fault because he backed up into me Mm-mm. and knocked me over again talk about competitiveness i don't know how many times i broke toes twisted ankles i wow. mean all of these kinds of things i'd have like scrapes up and down my arms that was a kid yeah i don't think i ever broke anything though to be honest growing up i i fortunately i never had to deal with any broken bones or anything until I got a little bit older. I probably had like scrapes and bruises and whatnot because I did grow grow up on a farm. So I had horses and we were always outside and we were messing with the horses and I would, I got kicked one time in the leg. And so I had that small injury, but like I said, I wasn't a huge risk taker. So I didn't really get myself involved in too many of those things. Obviously horses are pretty scary and that takes a certain kind of level of courage and bravery and everything to to be around them so i obviously have something (laughs) damn straight those horses are gorgeous creatures but they are big motherfuckers Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) yeah and i know that my first horse that i got i fell off of them a lot and Mm -hmm. to the point where i kind of was like scared of them and i didn't want to ride them and so my sister kind of took over but thankfully i never got hurt when that happened it just 
that was just kind of how it was. And I, I knew the risks that were involved with being around horses and I didn't really care. I loved it. You know, I was so thankful and fortunate that I got to be around them. But that that's kind of where my childhood divided is once I started getting into horses, I stopped doing all the other activities and I didn't really get myself involved in any school things or any sort of groups or anything like that. The only groups that I, the group that I was involved in was 4-H, which we got to do like the fairs and we got to do projects and stuff, but most of it was based around animals. So it was kind of, I didn't really care about any of the other stuff. <laughs> I always wanted to be a part of 4-H, but since we didn't live on a farm and everything, mm. my parents always were like, You're, that's more for people who live on farms, who deal with more of the livestock. I don't know if there was like actual requirements, but mm. since we didn't have, we only had dogs and cats. We didn't have like chickens, horses, cows, anything else right. that was yeah. livestock. Yeah, I guess it kind of just depends on your county and kind of what all they were involved in. Because I know that with our county, there was a lot of animal based stuff, but the fair also had different things like sewing and crafts and you could do just these random things that you could enter into the fair and win prizes for and just different projects that a lot of people did 4-H and they weren't involved in animals. There were other like baking and just weird things that I didn't do, but I was into the animal part of it. I did, I had like my hamster, I had my dog that I entered one year into this little obedience class or something. And then of course, like the horses. And then we had, which I don't like to think about, it's that, but we had market hogs and we did that which i like to block out of my memory that we ever did that but there was a lot of involvement with the 4-h and your community and kind of just being able to i don't know it kind of expanded your viewpoints on a lot of things and it made you sort of look at things differently because it was very educational and you got to kind of see different ways to do things and like our 4-h group was mostly horse based but a lot of the uh, some of the other kids would do other activities so you kind of got to be involved in and what they were doing because you always wanted to support each other and and kind of make sure that as a group you were united so i i do feel fortunate enough that i had that growing up being at, being involved in that group because if i didn't i feel like i would have just been super isolated and stuck at home by myself all the time if I didn't have that. So I'm I'm thankful that there was that involvement that I had for sure. Absolutely. Everybody needs that, uh, especially at young ages. And that's one thing mm -hmm. like kids nowadays, they're so disconnected from people. They're mm -hmm. they're plugged in, but they right. don't know what's going on around them. I don't know how many times we've driven by playgrounds on gorgeous days, absolute gorgeous days that we would have killed for as a kid. Mm -hmm. And there's not a single person out there. Right. And it's like, I miss that. Like, I wish there was a, honestly, I wish some of these playgrounds had some things that could cater to adults. Grown up, <laughs> grown yeah. up playground day. <laughs> yes. Like <laughs> swings that don't like, squeeze your hips and everything mm -hmm. they're made for kids oh yeah like they're not made for fully formed mm -hmm. adults and they were like squeezing our hips super tight it would be nice to have something like that like what huge monkey bars to play mm. on those were always like my biggest thing yeah. i love the fucking monkey bars but just outside activities like even even now Personally, for me, while the beach is nice and everything, I'm still somebody who needs a lot of activity. Right. It needs to be simulated. Mm -hmm. I'm not good just going to the beach and being there for... Just laying there. I, I can't. Right. It's hard for me to do that unless I've got a big group of people where I can talk to mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I would love to do, to do some of these things that we used to do as a kid and it be more catered to adults. Mm-hmm. Like some of these trampoline parks. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. They do have those. We had tried up in the panhandle and we walked in and we walked back out because oh, it really? was just pure. It was pure kids. Understandable. Oh. Completely understandable. Yeah. 
But, like, hmm. even if they could just do, like, one night a month or something. They should, yeah. 18 and older only or something like that. Or 21 like, and older. Yeah, because I feel like, don't they, at some skating rinks, they do, like, one night a week, it's a certain age group or something. They have, like, a certain theme or whatever, and it's only for, yeah, for that. Yeah, some of them do, which I think is is nice to help mm-hmm. bring those of us back to that time right. yeah and everything because you don't want to do these activities and just be surrounded by kids like that's just not enjoyable you know yeah even uh the sledding up at the snow cat ridge or whatever over i think in it's like ocala area or somewhere around there they mm. do like it's a winter park type oh thing. the new thing they just opened up mm-hmm. yeah even that, like, I've watched some of the videos and stuff, mm-hmm. and there's just so many little kids around. It's like, <laughs> they don't even know what this is. They're too plugged into things. Do they even know what snow is? <laughs> right, yeah. I just really, like I said, miss those times where we could just go out, and it'd be something where it's like, hey, just make sure you're home by dark. Mm-hmm. Right. When the street lights come on, come back home. Yeah. There was no way of your parents getting a hold of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unless they called your friend's parents to see if you were there. Right. And half the time it was, oh, I'm going to go meet up with so-and-so and then we're going to go play at the school or whatever. Mm-hmm. There was no yeah. way of reaching us. Yeah. It was just a carefree way of living. And I, I loved those times and I and it's weird because now we're so connected to technology and having that access and even like I get so used to having that connection with someone so if my boyfriend doesn't message me about you know if he's going to be late or something I get freaked out about it and think something has happened but you forget that you know, 20 some years ago, we didn't even have that luxury. So we just kind of were like, okay, well, they'll, they'll show up when they show up and just kind of Mm -hmm. whatever you just, you just lived with it. And it wasn't really a thing. And now our, our minds and have become rewired. And that's the first thing we think of is like, oh, let me get on the phone and and find out what's happening. And like, let's text so and so and instead of just, well, when you get in touch with them, when you see them, like it just it happens. And (laughs) it's just all random. And it's crazy. Or don't call before 8 p.m. because it's long distance or something Mm -hmm. like that. Like, you just, you were very, you you didn't care Mm -hmm. because, okay, I don't know how many times with us being kind of a smaller town and everything, and we would spend a lot of time up at the playground at the school. Mm. So my mom could go out on the front porch and holler. See? And we'd hear. Yeah. And we'd hear her. Because it was close enough <laughs> that it just, it worked that way. And you had to memorize phone numbers. Oh, God, yeah. That's a challenge today. I can't do that anymore. <laughs> Me neither. I think I, I know like three phone numbers. Yeah, by same. Now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. I don't know about you, but that was just, that's one of the things I miss most is, I guess in a sense, the freedom. But it's kind of mm-hmm. funny because I know you know that I love watching criminal minds um Mm -hmm. csis all of those crime dramas (laughs) i'm one of those people that like watch those to relax or listen to true crime podcasts to relax thinking about it now it's so surprising of how yes there was a lot of crime a lot of kidnappings all that stuff Mm -hmm. in the 90s but like i guess in a sense my mind's boggled at how there wasn't more like in some of these smaller towns like right my knowledge the best of my knowledge i don't know of anything like that happening close to me Mm -hmm. and it just kind of surprises me just because of how little communication we had with each other right if you weren't sitting at home Mm -hmm. it was one of those things where it's like okay just be home by whatever time and if you didn't have a watch you had to you had to be damn pretty good sh- with like the sun and being able to tell <laughs> from where the sun was at at that point. Because I didn't have a watch a lot of times. Yeah, I don't think I ever had a watch. I- I'd break them too much. I was <laughs> too rough doing t- <laughs> trying to keep up with the boys. Yeah, that's the thing. Like nowadays, 
kids and parents, it's like, where are you? Where are you? Answer, mm-hmm. answer, exactly. answer. Yeah, you get yeah, you get more involved in in people's lives that way. Whereas before, we all kind of did our own thing, and you just you found out things when you found out, and mm-hmm. and now we kind of know anything and everything about people, and it's it's almost too invasive sometimes that we just. It'd be great to just kind of go back to that way of living and just be a little bit more simplistic in the, in the way we, we operate. Because I almost feel like we worked better as a society and we worked better as a community and just being better friends to people that way almost than we are now. Because, yeah, because we didn't care mm-hmm. about what was going on in other people's right. like personal lives. It was, it's their personal life. Mm-hmm. It has nothing, unless it directly affected us, we didn't care. Right. Now we're so involved in everything. Like everybody has to make a comment about everything else. It's like, I don't know about you, but for me personally, like I, I take time where I'm off of social media. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We call it social media breaks because we don't, there's so much junk on there that we just don't need it. Right. My husband and I have already talked about we're like this summer, we're going to be like, our phones are going to be more like cameras. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it. Like they're going to be more like cameras. Just utilize. Yeah. Or you should just go and get yourself a nice disposable film camera and try, uh, try living back like you did in the (laughs) nineties. We might do that. I do have a nice digital camera from like early, like 2010, 12 era so it's nice it's got like a 35 times zoom yeah i still have that thing it still works i still have massive memory cards for it and everything but yeah it's one of those things where it's like let's just get away from society grabbing wanting information wanting to shove things down our throats let's just get back to the good old days right yeah that would be nice, but that'll never happen. <laughs> we have to force it upon ourselves. Can you still get film developed? Mm-hmm. I recently did that about a year ago because I still had okay. an old film camera that I forgot about. And I, I took it with us on our trip that we went to on last year or in 21. And I went and was able to get it developed. Now, okay. I think because I had left the camera in the car or something, a lot of the pictures were messed up. So I was a little bit disappointed about that. But, and I don't, or maybe it was just the film was a little too old by the time I got developed because mm-hmm. I had that camera for five, six years or something oh, wow, before yeah. I found So I'm thinking maybe the film just had gotten messed up. But um, yeah, you can definitely still do that. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Because there is something, something different about like just having an actual film picture as opposed to digital. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think I want to get one too. And, and maybe if we do any sort of events or anything different, I want to. I want to try to use that and just just kind of see how they come yeah. out and I love those. I do too. And it was it was always fun to okay, you took pictures, you don't know how it's turning out you have or no any, idea. Mm-hmm. Or if you actually like even got what got you it. wanted in the picture. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I know just going back through all my old photos and stuff, some of the the pictures that we had kept and have and I'm like why do we have these? Like, they're terrible. They're just, they're blurry or they're just not focused on the right thing. It's just super random stuff. And it it is wild to think about how you just, you took the picture, you hoped it came out, you really had no idea. And you're like, this was a great picture. And then it comes out and you're like, no, no, that wasn't good. (laughs) And you can't retake it. The moment's gone. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah, moment's gone and passed. You just got to pray that you're quick enough with your your finger and holding mm-hmm. if you have the disposable <laughs> one holding down on the flash while you're taking the picture oh, yeah. but mm-hmm. not like moving the camera when you take the picture that was always the biggest issue oh my gosh yeah i wish i gotten i wish i had gotten involved more in photography growing up i, f- I feel like that would have been a great a great field to kind of go into or at least have as like a side thing is just be really good with the camera that would be one of my things i would love to do I would have too. I, I always thought I was good because I just took a shit right? ton of yeah. pictures. I did too. But I, I wasn't. I did take photography in high school. Oh, nice. 
the high school I ended up graduating from had it as an option. I was like, fuck yeah. And I found out that I just really wasn't, I was good with like digital cameras or just the point and mm -hmm. click, right. not the, the different film. compositions and the different light, the speeds mm -hmm. oh, gosh, or yeah. anything like that. But because I always wanted to be a, uh, a wildlife photographer. Me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had thought about going into that after high school is doing that, but I didn't. So do you feel like there's anything from your childhood that you wish you had gotten involved in? Like, is there something that you look back on and think, oh, I wish that I had done that or something? You know, that's a really good question. Probably. I probably would, have said, would say I wish I probably would have stuck with sports a little bit more. Mm. Junior high, high school, I fell out. I did do like tennis in high my okay. last two years of high school, but it was the coaches were kind of just whatever. Mm -hmm. And so it really wasn't, if you didn't already know how to play, really, you kind of were just fucked in a sense. Yeah. What about you? I can't think of anything that I feel like I missed out on or wish I got involved in. Because like I said, I once I got into horses, that's all I really cared about. And mm -hmm. now that I'm not in horses right now, I, I miss it a lot. So it's, yeah. it's just one of those things that once you you get invested in, it's kind of a part of you for the rest of your life. But I don't know, I feel like I did get the opportunity to do a lot of things. I think maybe I would have, you know what, actually, I wish that I would have gotten the opportunity to do more snow sports. Like I really want to go skiing or snowboarding. I've never done that in my life. And I do wish I had that experience to be able to, you know, I'm not going to say I'm going to be a pro or anything, but it would be really cool to kind of have a general idea of how yeah. to do that. So that would be something I missed out on. So there is still time. I mean, you're there still is. you're, you're still alive <laughs> can, and breathing. Exactly. I'm <laughs> so, still my my joints and body is still moving well. So yeah. I, can... <laughs> I guess like in that kind of sense, I kind of I had always had an interest in surfing. Honestly. <gasps> oh, okay. So I was gonna I forgot to mention this before, but being involved in the whole ballet thing, like obviously you remember Mary Kay and Ashley did their little yes. their little video. So speaking of surfing, when I saw their Hawaiian beach party and they had the whole surfing thing and also their Our Lips Are Sealed movie and, and stuff uh -huh. where there's a lot of surfing involved. I was like, Oh, I could do surfing. I want to get involved in surf. <laughs> I was the same way. <laughs> I yes, those and then like blue crush oh my god when that came yes. out, oh my god i was, I was like, obsessed sign mm -hmm. me up mm -hmm. and then mtv right after that had done a kind of a find the next surf female surfing surf pro okay. show kind of like an america's next top model yeah but america's was, next top surfer <laughs> yeah pretty much <laughs> and i love that and then also the Disney Channel original movie, was it Rip Girls? Oh, With Camilla yeah. Bell. Oh, I forgot about that one. But yeah, I, I always wanted, and then like Johnny Tsunami also mm -hmm. had that. I always was interested in surfing, but mm. being in landlocked Kansas. Right. <laughs> you ain't got no options for that. You could do like the behind the boat in a lake, but that's mm. nothing. I tried when we went down to Galveston, Texas. Mm -hmm. I tried there, which there's like, that's the Gulf Coast now. Uh, yeah. And then when, when my high school band came down to Florida, we tried, I tried when we went to whichever beach, I don't even remember which side we went, whether it was the Gulf or the Atlantic. And at that point I was like, okay, I'm done. That was my freshman year, and I'm like, if I can't do it by now, if I don't have that natural talent to get up mm -hmm. on a surfboard by now, even though right. I've never been on a surfboard in my life, <laughs> then oh my I just need to stop. But yeah, surfing was def would definitely be mm. one of those things that I wish I could have had the ability to get into. Right. Yeah, I agree. Cause I feel like I feel like trying to go surfing now at our age, like it's possible but i almost feel like it it's one of those abilities that you wanted to have picked up as a younger kid just with the balance and everything like that mm -hmm. and just being having that smaller body nowadays i just feel like you could probably do it a little bit 
but there's you're not gonna turn pro like i just i don't know yeah like i i I never like wanted to turn pro or anything like that it was always just i wanted to be able to be cool like show off your skill yeah Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i agree since when did she learn how to surf since this scene apparently right Uh, yeah just having that little extra thing to throw into some you know, to a conversation, like, oh yeah, I go surfing from time to time. Yeah, like, <laughs> exactly. That would have been so cool as a as a kid, as a teenager, to mm-hmm. be able to have that. Because, like, actually, one of the movies that we'll be talking about when we get to ninety three is a movie called Surf Ninjas, and I mean, I think that was probably one of the first ones that like turned me on to surfing. And the concept of surfing, because I mean, I saw that when I was like two, right? And I have been obsessed with that movie since, and everything. And it's and surfing's a big part of it. I really wish, like, because like the Atlantic and the Gulf really aren't even that good for surfing. If I, I don't think, I just don't think they get the waves. I don't think we get the waves over here on the yeah, east. Yeah, I don't coast. think the Gulf. Yeah, the Gulf is definitely not as good. Mm-mm. Yeah. Yeah, we just don't get the get as good as waves as like the West Coast has yeah. to be able to really manage that. At this point in time, I would love to go watch pro surfing tournament. Though. That would be kind of fun. Yeah, I would love. Well, honestly, I've always wanted to go and watch the Olympics, like be able oh. to go and and see some of those. Like that, that would be really cool. Like that's still kind of a dream of mine, and still possible. Like we could still put that on our bucket list. We could do that. Any other activities, anything of the sorts you can think of? I'm sure I'm going to think of like a million after we're done today. <laughs> but honestly, like, no, no. Yeah. Did you? Ever, well, okay. This is, did you ever, how much did you use your imagination when playing outside? <laughs> I hope I used it, but I, I don't know. I really have no idea what my brain was was thinking i feel like i had a pretty good imagination but as to what extent i'm not really sure were you an imaginative kid yes for sure sometimes pretend the clubhouse was like a a pirate boat or something because we had like a little pole that we could slide down oh cool the clubhouse itself was like the top mast or something and slide down the mast or some something of that sort (gasps) I had a, had a lot of like imagination, like mm-hmm. running wild. A lot of it was like putting myself into like different movies or shows mm-hmm. and like how I'd want it to go. Right. Yes. Oh, yeah. Definitely that. Yeah, you would probably do a lot of that as a kid. I know I think I did watching certain things and then you would kind of imagine yourself in that situation or in those shoes and and kind of oh, what would that be like? And then put your own little spin on it and, and you yeah. get your in, your either your siblings involved or you get your friends involved and they would have their roles. And mm-hmm. yeah, I think we did some of that as well. Yeah, we we definitely did. And I think my brothers were decent troopers for the most part <laughs> going along with it. I mean, they were, they were too and everything, but just because of the age differences. Mm-hmm. I think it was kind of one of those things where it's play with your sister for right now and then you could go play by yourself kind of thing. Right. They kind of had to go along with whatever fun game you were thinking about doing. <laughs> yeah. and it, But it wasn't, for me, it wasn't necessarily, I wasn't the, oh, let's play dress up or anything like that. I was, I was more right. of a, let's go outside or, mm-hmm. okay, like I said, now that I'm thinking, tag or hide and seek? Mm-hmm. Those did, are which really would you, fun. Which did you prefer? Oh. I won't probably tag. I feel like we played a lot more tag and also a version of tag, which was manhunt. Did you ever play that? It was like basically a tag at night. So it was hide and seek in the dark. Yeah, I guess it was like a combination of like hide and seek and tag in the dark. (laughs) Yeah, almost. But did you do the flashlights? Was it the flashlights? I don't know, honestly, if there were flashlights involved. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. So that was one of, I probably, I think I preferred hide and seek. Okay. Because it was a little bit more exploratory, but we had like a little wooded area. Mm. On So it was like our house, the school, a little wooded area. Mm-hmm. So we would be part of the big kids. They always preferred doing like hide and seek because it was a little bit more spooky and stuff. 
Well, yeah, because especially with some of the kids would try to be the the most creative and finding the best and hardest mm-hmm. spot to, to not find them. Yeah. And so it was always, everybody had a flashlight and that was, so you could see where you were going when right. um, you were going to hide. And then the person who was seeking, I guess it, what was it? Flashlight tag, like flashlight hide and seek. It was a mix of flashlight hide and seek and tag. Cause like flashlight tag is like when, if the light you shone on you, your, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. But like with hide and seek, it was kind of a little bit of the same concept, but like you did still have to get up to them. You kept your flashlight turned off while you were right. hiding. It would just, it would get pretty intense. Like we'd have to, there would be some times where we'd have to, all right, come on out. We're, <laughs> raise the white flag. Oh my gosh, yes. So what, for manhunt, kind of explain that a little bit more. I honestly don't know. I, I don't know what it was about. I, I'd have to look it up. I just, yeah. someone had mentioned it recently online and I, I just know that was something that we played. And I don't know if it was something that we did at like summer camp or if we did that at home. But I almost feel like we didn't really play that at home. It was more of a like a, a summery camp type thing where you're with a bunch more people because the more people yeah. you had, obviously the more challenging it would be uh, mm-hmm. versus just like a couple of people. It just kind of gets boring. It would usually be a time where like my brothers would have their friends over and then ideally I'd have a friend or two over myself when we do stuff like that <laughs> or when um it was a like something would play during youth group my brother's youth group so it is kind of like tag and it, i guess there's like a a group of hunters and a group of hunted uh-huh. and so and there's like an escape zone so you have to find and tag the hunted before they get to the escape zone okay but you could play it in the daytime or in the nighttime. So. so it's kind of got a little bit of a, like a capture the flag feel. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you're kind of all just standing around and then, you know, I think that was definitely something we play more at a camp for sure. So you could have your sides and, and kind of your teams and I, yeah, I feel like we played capture the flag and flag football and those like more. Yeah easier versions of games so going back now that you mention it going back to your question earlier of what i wanted to do feel like i miss out summer Mm. camps so Mm. i didn't do a lot of summer camps it was a lot more of the sports like camps Mm -hmm. or the day brownie camps i never did until high school high school i did youth camps youth Mm. group but otherwise i never did any of like the i never i never had that like summer camp crystal lake camp (laughs) oh friday the 13th there um like experiences (laughs) (laughs) but you know what i mean like i didn't have yeah it wasn't where we were i didn't go to like those overnight camps i guess is what it was yeah, we did. The only camp that we ever did was horse camp. Like it was yeah. a, it was a division of 4-H and they hosted like a horse camp. And I want to say it was like a week long. So we would go out to wherever it was and there was cabins and, you know, you stayed in the, in the, in the cabins and mm-hmm. you had your horse there for the whole week. And so you got to do different activities and stuff with them. So it was kind of like a learning thing with your horse and then there was the the side of it where you got to play crafts and do different activities and stuff on the side. Um, but that was definitely a big part of my childhood. I want to say I, I went there at least four times throughout the years. And then at one point, I don't know if it was in the 90s or it was probably in the 2000s at that point. But we did a I did a two week long horse camp, but it was in New York and I obviously didn't take my horse at that one but i went to a like a two week long one and i remember i hated it <laughs> so <laughs> that was kind of my only involvement with camps was it was horse related i don't really have any knowledge as far as what other camps would have been like or would have been, would it have involved because i didn't care about those i was like if it's horses i'll go <laughs> Well, that's, yeah, I, um, cause there was this, uh, show on Disney channel called Bug Juice 
And it was literally like, it was like a little reality show with kids at camp. Mm. That was like a four week long camp or something like that. Okay. So I always watched that. And of course it was always older, like preteens pretty Mm. much. So there's always like, oh, well, I'm dating so-and-so, all that kind of stuff. Oh, so God. I was like, eh, I didn't care about that. But, yeah. like, the, the, the stuff that they would do, like going out onto the lake or mm. what I called the blob because I watched Heavyweight, the Disney Channel movie Heavyweights. I, the blob. Right. That was other things. I was I always wanted to, like, experience that. But it just, I don't know if it just, there really wasn't, options or if it or what what kept that from happening but i want i wonder if i ever saw this or not this bug juice thing disney channel 1998 yeah i was gonna say it was 90s huh i know they had another like camp type show but it was like late 80s early 90s that something like raise your shorts or Uh uh-huh yeah you know what i'm saying yeah, there was I, rem- I remember I, that one. Yeah, I remember that concept. I'd have to watch a little bit of the videos on Bug Juice to see if that was something. The name doesn't trigger anything, but I'm. I do feel like I also I also watched a show that was kind of revolved around a camp. So yeah. that was always kind of interesting to see what other kids were doing during their summer times. Yeah, I think that's all I got. That was our childhood. Our childhood activities. <laughs> childhood at living the life outdoors yes exactly no one knows what that's like anymore no but i think going into next week we're gonna be doing a little tv show battle so it's gonna be a little i shouldn't say a little show it's probably a big show two big shows that were really big in the early 90s time period that April and I really enjoyed. So I think we're going to have some fun kind of going into both of those. That's kind of what we have for this episode of 90s Noise. Thanks for tuning in this week and be sure to leave us your reviews. Make sure to follow us on Instagram. And if you leave a review, we'll be sure to shout you out on our later episodes. We'd love to hear kind of your feedback and what you're liking. If you have any sort of recommendations for us as far as topics that you would like for us to touch on, we'd love to hear them. That's all we got, and we'll see you next week, everyone. Peace! Peace out!